Would you like to learn how to determine if your enterprise architecture is successful, if it's driving transformation and business value? If so, this video is for you. My name is Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with approximately 25 years experience. And today we're going to talk about how you measure the success of your enterprise architecture. Now, one thing I will tell you is 70 to 80% of all technology systems that are designed produce no business value. And that's where the enterprise architect comes into the rescue by aligning the organization's people, processes, and technology, which are the three main components of business. So one of the best ways that I like to start any architecture is to ask the client, uh, what is your measure of success? And by that, for example, let's say I have a client to say a global e-commerce retailer, and they say their measure of success is increasing revenue by a certain percent. I immediately know what the goal is. And now we need to start thinking of strategies on how to help that happen. And that could include the people and uh, what they need. It could also include technology tools. So if we know ahead of time what their customer considers successful, we can measure that. And we always have to ask that question. But what else do we measure? Enterprise architecture is not if the technology works, it's good. We have to measure things in context with the enterprise and what we're trying to do with enterprise architecture, which is business optimization, creating agility, creating efficiency. Let's tell, let's talk about this. One of the first things we need to look at is the business alignment and the value that's being created by the architecture. So we've got a couple of metrics we can look at. We can look on the return on investment. And realistically speaking here, what we're doing, going to do is compare the cost of the enterprise architecture initiative, whatever tools it took, whatever systems it took, whatever training it took, whatever process changes it took, and we'll compare that to the financial results. So if we spent a million dollars on our website but generated $20 million in new sales, that might be a pretty great thing. We can also look at the return on investment with regards to cost savings. Did we invest a billion dollars in this and save $2 billion or something else? Or revenue growth or how fast new products could be taken to the market? So we can, we can determine what we're getting out of it. The next thing we typically look at is some degree of efficiency. So in the way we do business or our business processes, what happened as a result? Did it normally take uh, a month to create a product and now it takes three weeks where we reduce the process time? Uh, did we reduce redundancies in certain environments where maybe an organization had a lot of competing systems and they were all operating in efficiency and efficiently and we trimmed them down to one or two systems which made everybody more efficient and it reduced costs, for example? Were there other operational efficiencies, meaning maybe AI could really create the equivalent work of another 100,000 people in your organization. You keep your 100,000 people, and now you've got the equivalent of 100,000 more. So that would be huge operational efficiency. Now, on the business alignment and value creation side, we're also looking for strategic alignment. And we really want to determine how well our enterprise ar architecture outcomes really supported business goals. And we can track everything here that we need to. Maybe it's a business unit satisfaction or stakeholder surveys or some things we want to track and see if the tech is doing what it's supposed to be. Now, the next thing that we're really trying to check is we're really trying to get into the rationale and see if it worked. So why do enterprise architects really exist? Well, we really exist because the IT people want to do this and the business leaders need this. And if there's no gap in between them, we get technology systems that could make the worker's life better or in some cases, the worker's life worse. But if we've got a full alignment here, now we're dealing with business optimization. So we're going to look at business related metrics, for example, and we're going to be able to look at what architectural changes we made drove what business outcome. So if we've got an AI recommendation engine for a global retailer and it's recommending products based upon a person's browsing history or their previous purchases, and that increased sales, that's very easy to track. So we're always going to see what change do we make and what did it do based upon goals. So that's the next thing we need to look at. Now let's talk about IT performance and operational efficiency. So when we're talking about here is we're looking at the business itself. So with regards to systems integration and interoperability, 
we can measure things like the reduction in, say, duplicate systems, uh, improved data sharing, uh, streamlined integration processes between two applications, for example. When we look at the IT department for, for performance and efficiency, we can look at time to deploy new things. How long does it take now to roll out an application versus before? Maybe in the data center, it literally took three to six months to do it, to, to the rollout. And maybe the rollout could be done less than a month or less than even two weeks in the cloud because of infrastructure as code and the simplicity to do things compared to the need to build the physical system. We also want to check system uptime and reliability and availability. So we want to evaluate if the improvements we made in the system made the system work better. Uh, did we have less problems, faster resolution times? These are going to be goals. Now, the next thing we're really going to be looking at is governance, risk management, and compliance. And the key here is we're going to be seeing is things working. So if we crafted a new security policy, for example, or a new policy of any time, are the people and the systems up are complying with the policy? So we're trying to make sure that things actually happen that we plan. What about risk reduction? Absolutely. So we want to be able to track uh, the reduction in the, uh, and the severity of IT incidents or security breaches before and after our architecture. So we used to have incidents three times a year, and now we've got a new architecture and we have it one time a year. That's a huge improvement and it's a huge risk reduction. So that's typically what we're talking about. The next thing that we're typically talking about is stakeholder engagement and satisfaction. And this is going to be, again, something we want to measure. Now, the stakeholders that are key individuals that have the stake in the business's outcomes, for example. Often, if you've got a multinational conglomerate, you've got various business units. Key stakeholders will be the people that run each business unit, for example, because you don't want to pick a technology system that's going to hurt a business unit. So we really need to be able to make sure that the stakeholders, the key people are involved, feel good and engaged with the technology system. So we're going to send surveys and feedback scores because we want to regularly collect feedback from the business teams and the IT stakeholders and make sure things are effective and our outcomes getting better than they were before. That's how you track and make sure the enterprise architecture is working. If outcomes are better, it's a good job. If things are worse, uh, we did not do a good job here. We may also look at adoption rates and look at how many of the team use the standardized processes, the standardized pr platforms, and the standardized solutions that are part of an enterprise initiative. You know those good platforms that have been designed to maximize the efficiency for that particular organization. And we also want to look at the number of uh, cross-functional initiatives because uh, what's going on now? Did we enable a new architecture that enables three or four things to happen at the same time to create new value for the business? Or are we less efficient because things are more complex? And uh, innovation and future readiness. This is something that is obviously a critical measure of architecture success. What if we pulled all the money out of the IT architecture and cut the cost by 50%, but the next time an organization wanted to change and do something, it takes them five years to do it? Well, we put that business, we may have saved the money in an awful position to change. And one thing for sure in business is things are constantly changing. So from an innovation and future readiness perspective, we want to make sure that with the systems we design are agile and can support the growth of the business or the business is changing directions based on microeconomic or macroeconomic factors. So we're going to be looking for these types of things in innovation and future readiness. So we can, from a digital transformation perspective, we can count and assess the success rate of projects that uh, enterprise architecture did to drive transformation. From an agility perspective, we can evaluate how quickly the organization can pivot its IT strategy into based on a new trend or technology or macroeconomic environment. And we can see how long it used to take versus how long it's gonna take now. And uh, might actually look at the portfolio and track the number of legacy systems that we may be retiring uh, compared to successful uh, operation of either something new or more agile or more flexible. So everything we're checking here is based on the actual business and the improvement of the business. And that's really what I wanted to talk about. So today we talked about the five main uh, things you can track to measure the success of your enterprise architecture. If you'd like to become an enterprise architect or a cloud architect or an AI architect or a security architect, we hold free webinars 
once per week on architectural roles. We'll go over the roles. We'll go over the skills you need to be a cloud architect, enterprise architect, AI architect, because we run all these different webinars. We'll talk about uh, what you need to get hired and uh, we'll answer any questions you have for at least 60 to 90 minutes live and free on Zoom because we really wanna help you start your architecture career. We also have architectural training programs if you're interested for cloud architects, AI architects, security architects, uh, enterprise architects and others, and you can see them on our website, which will be in the description of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos uh, to assist you in your IT architect career, whether that's an enterprise architect, cloud architect, security architect, or AI architect. And we look forward to seeing you in another video or another free webinar. Take care and I look forward to seeing you soon.